Hey guys, what's going on? So in uh, today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to convert this form that we made last week. Um, there's a few modifications that are already added to the form from last week. And what this does is, it's a form that a customer would go ahead and fill out, and then it would return back to them whether or not they got approved or rejected on their loan. So one of the modifications you'll notice right off the top are these placeholder text in here, which were not in here last week. I'm going to show you how to put that in, but more importantly, I'm going to show you how to do this. Add a little bit of bootstrap, and then we're going to convert it into something like this, which is a lot more user-friendly looking. So I'm going to show you how to do this. There's a few things in here. These are There's some static images in here. Uh, these I've just gone ahead and put in the text, but I haven't added any links here. But this form is fully functional. Um, we've also put in a little air catch in this, and that is I only want to constrain the loan to $25,000. So I'm going to go ahead and demo how this form works. So we're just going to put in some dummy data. Mark Adams will say he's got two dependents. Applicant income is that. Co-applicant income is this. Now I'm going to put in $25,000, and you're going to see what's going to happen. Loan term 360. The other thing we added in this one is I constrained the credit history to zero, one or zero one two or three and this is a new addition before they were able to add the a number in so i just said let's constrain it to this and we'll leave everything else the same and now you've also noticed that this is a css style button or bootstrap 4 style type button so i'm gonna hit submit and what you're actually gonna see is now the result comes up here and it's a little bit bigger it looks a little bit more nice so invalid your loan requested exceeds twenty five thousand dollar limit now if i go back and I were to go ahead and put 24999 and my loan amount, hit submit. It's going to say, all right, I'm approved. And if I were to go back yet again, put in a credit history of zero and hit submit. Now it's going to say I'm rejected. So as you can see, this is a lot more aesthetically pleasing, uh, easier to use, and can be integrated in any kind of template. Uh, so for this, I use Bootstrap 4 with some components from crispy forms which i'll walk through as well which is a django plugin so let me go ahead and show you how to build this right now welcome back if you haven't already seen some of the shameless promotion up here i encourage you to go ahead and join some of these groups uh, if not all of them uh, there's a lot of great content that's specifically on each one of these um, at the same time, if you do want to amp up your game in machine learning, Python programming, and application development, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. So let me go ahead and show you what changes I made to the original code to get to something like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all the different files that we would have. So originally, this was our this was what our original form looked like. I'm going to come back to the form last just because it's the most complex to go ahead and change so what we're going to do is we're going to walk from top to bottom so that the, so there's a few things we need to change in our settings.py first of all you're going to have to install crispy forms and to do that it's just going to be pip install django crispy forms once you've done that you're going to go ahead and add crispy forms as an installed application over here the other thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add this line here which is crispy template pack equals to bootstrap for now this code as well is going to be available on github so you can go ahead and play with it later on but just to follow along and then this little component here what this does the static url is this just creates a static place for us to store our images which are these three images right here and the reason why you need that you don't actually need that in production you just need it in dev because once you put it on a server, you can go ahead and point to the URL for these pictures. However, because this is running in a virtual environment and the setup's a little bit different, we need to tell Django exactly where to look in the dev environment, and that is on my local network. Go ahead and look in a specific location for these. So you just go ahead and put in this line and we'll walk through how to use it later on. All right, so as I work my way down, I'm gonna skip the HTML files. The next file I'm gonna go to is forms.py. Okay, so everything for the most part remains the same with the exception of me adding in these placeholders. So it's the exact same forms.char field. We had max length equal to 150. Then I just added comma and then widget equals forms.text input then attributes and, and placeholder is equal to interfirst name. And so that's what's going to show 
on the form right here. Enter first name, enter last name. And those are just placeholders to give people some direction on exactly what to put in there. And anywhere there is a integer, I left it as an integer. I did not put any quotes around it. And that's really the major change. I didn't, you can't really do that for drop downs, but really it's meant for anything that has a text input or anything that has a number input. So if this is an integer field, you're gonna use number input. If this is a char field, you're gonna use text input. All right, so going down to my next file, we're gonna go down to models.py. And in models.py, I did not make any changes, so thankfully we don't need to worry about that. The next one we're gonna do is, I only added in URLs pi, you don't have to touch either. I only added this in so I have the old form and then I have the new form so that I can show you the difference. Now views.py has a minor adjustment. This was the original code. And all I wanted to do is I wanted to say, if the integer value of the loan amount in that data frame is less than $25,000, then go ahead and proceed as we had before. Print, in the, print out the application status, then print out the answer. However, if it's greater than $25,000, which is handled by this else, then go ahead and send a message and say, invalid, your loan request exceeds $25,000. I should say the $25,000 limit. And that's all we have to change here. You're gonna render back to the same form and then you're good to go. Really where all the magic happens is this HTML file. So in the HTML file, there's a few things I did. I went to my form and I added in a folder called images because any image that I wanted to store, I just wanted to be in the my forms directory. So now we're going to go to CX form. Now there's a whole different slew of ways you can go ahead and design this. You can do something called a base HTML file and then just add in specific code to certain files, which is probably the right way to do it if you're gonna build multiple pages. But because I only built one page, I left it this way. All right, first things first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and add this link, which is for your bootstrap. So really to get this link, it's quite simple. You're just gonna open up your browser. You're gonna go to a new tab. You're gonna type in, go to Google, type in bootstrap for URL. And you can go to, most of these have some kind of a link, but you can go to this one over here. Um, and then your link is gonna be right here for your CSS. You can just copy and paste that. And once you copy and paste that into here, you're ready to rock and roll. If you have some jQuery and JavaScript stuff, you can go ahead and copy and paste this. I didn't use it this time around, but I put it uh, in my code anyways, and you just put it right before the body tag ends. But again, I didn't really use it, so it doesn't really matter if this was in here or not. This time around, I didn't use it. What this piece of code basically does is, is consider this almost like an API. Every time you make some kind of a bootstrap call, it knows exactly what to do in that situation. So it's gonna know whether or not to have a certain margin number or a certain padding number. It's gonna know if you're putting in a row class versus something like a um, table class. So it basically has all these predefined things and the best way to learn Bootstrap honestly is just go ahead and what you're gonna do is again, open a link, go to Bootstrap, go to documentation and honestly start reading this. So the way I learned Bootstrap is, you know, obviously through a little bit of trial and error and, and doing some real life examples, but really I just went through the docs, the tutorials um, it really explains how everything is. Now the most ex important one that I think you guys would need to know is the grid examples. And this is a great uh, page to sort of walk you through how the grid examples work. But if you go here to grid system, this page here is honestly gold. Um, it'll tell you exactly how a page is set up. So if you picture an, an HTML page, consider span 12 to be the maximum length, or the maximum width, sorry, that a web page would be. And what Bootstrap allows you to do is it allows you to segment it out into different types of components. So you can have literally span ones across here. So that means you're gonna have 12 little boxes on your web page. You can have span six, which basically splits it into two different boxes, span 12, span four and eight. And I would say these two are fairly popular and actually so is span six for that matter. But essentially this is how you would go ahead and start setting up some of your stuff. So we're gonna walk through that into the HTML code. So when I go ahead and look at the HTML code, we're gonna work from top to bottom. So we've added in the bootstrap link, which is great. 
We're gonna also go ahead and load static. So if you remember in settings.py, I told you guys about this static page. The way that static page works, essentially, is I'm gonna go ahead and define that static page. So if I were to just show you the way the directory system is set up, just to give you some more context. But when you look at the way this is set up, so remember we have uh, Django API, which is a project, my API, which is the actual application. When you click on that, this is the main directory that you get in here. So let me just clean this up here. Once you do this, you're gonna have all these different pages. It's essentially, it's the same file where your models.py, your tests and all that other kind of stuff is sitting. In that, I went ahead and set up a static directory. In static, I have my images. And then these are all the different images I have that feed it up there. So your static directory is essentially going to sit in the same as your application directory. And then from there, you can go ahead and fetch all the different images you want. And so when you're doing this, what you're gonna say is load static. So load, go ahead and load what my static URL is set up as. Load crispy forms tags. You're gonna need this to access crispy forms. And then as you go through this, these are all different types of bootstrap codes. And this is basically saying, set my margin on both sides of my page horizontally because this is the x-axis by two, which has a predetermined amount. I think it's 50 or 100 px uh, or pixels. And then you have the same thing for my, which is from top to bottom, five represents a certain number of pixels. And I can't remember what it is, but it's all in that code. And so this, don't confuse this for two pixels. That's not what this mean. Two, I believe means 50 pixels. Five, I believe means 100 or 150 pixels or something like that. But it's like I said, it's all there. Uh, container fluid, if I were to just leave this as container, it wouldn't use a full page. It would just use um, a certain component of that page. Container fluid, basically, I'm telling it to go ahead and use end to end. And then I would go ahead and start adding in rows and then my background color. So my background color, so my background color is essentially this piece right here. So notice how it's all blue. And that's what that color there represents. Then I've basically said, go ahead and divide, divide this into, if I use column SM4, and I've used that three times, that basically means split it up into three different equal sections, which is pretty much, I don't know if I can scroll over this, but that's one, that's two, and that's three. And every single time you go ahead and you open a row, so if you notice that I have my row column above this, my class row above this, anytime I have a class column, all of these numbers have to add up to 12. So four, 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 12, that means that I have three equal parts of four across. And four, like I said, represents a certain number of pixels that are predefined. And then in there, I can go ahead and say, load my from my static directory, load images slash social. Um, and then you go ahead and specify the size that you want for these as well. So this essentially takes care of this entire first row. So you're always gonna start off with some kind of a container. After the container, you're gonna say, okay, let me specify my first row. And so basically that big first row was essentially this entire dark, darker blue area over here. So this is basically what this row is. And then in that row, we have three columns, one, two, and three that are of equal width. That's what that is basically saying. Then after that's done, I said, all right, let's start a new row and let's keep it blank, which is actually right over here. You wouldn't see it. That's why this sort of cuts off over here but have this one more row so I can keep a little bit of space between here. I could have also used cell padding and all that stuff, but I just chose to do it this way because it was a bit easier. Um, and then after that, go ahead and open my next row, which is going to be this piece right here where, the, where this navigation menu is supposed to be. So I said split this column up to eight, which is majority here, and then the rest four leave for this um, navigation menu that I've just put inside of a table. Once that's been done, then the next piece is, okay, let's go ahead and open yet another row. And in this row, I'm gonna leave this column empty, which is why there's nothing in here. And this column, which is going to basically take up six. So if this is six in the middle, that means each of these have to be three in order for this whole thing to add up to 12. So this is column three, this is column three, this is column six, because I wanted a little bit more width in there. And then I also said from the Y standpoint, have whatever five represents in terms of pixels as a gap up here, which is why you're seeing this up here. Uh, method is still gonna be post. Now, like I said, if you use crispy forms, crispy forms can actually take care of some of this stuff for you because there's something called crispy forms handler, which I did not use in this. But essentially when you do that, you just have to pass through the crispy form name and it'll take care of all that stuff in the background. You define it in the crispy form handler, but I'm not using that today. 
So we're going to keep it the same. Form method is post. We're going to have our token come in. This time we're going to specify form. And then we're going to go ahead and add in crispy after because we want to go ahead and load all the different specific crispy form tags that are attached to this. Then finally, once all of this stuff is done, I'm going to make sure that I use my button button primary, which I showed you before. And then finally, because remember, this was our second column, our third column, which sits over here, is actually where I've gone ahead and put the error message or the message of whether or not I'm going to be approved or not for that loan. And like I said, we don't need the script down here. So it's really, that's it. Those are the only modifications I made. I know it sounds difficult, but honestly, it's really not that tough once you play with it. So we've gone ahead and tested it. You know, if I were to go ahead and continue this tutorial series, I probably won't and I'll end it off here. But if I would, I would probably show you um, in a next tutorial, not linked to this, but maybe to something else, how I would go ahead and create this navigation menu using the URLs py, urls.py file and how I can maybe even add a second application. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a very short one, but really I wanted to show you how you can take something, you know, really functional like this, but extremely boring looking and create it into something a lot more dynamic and fun to look at and play with. And you can go ahead and add another application here if you wanted to. So, you know, sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with this stuff. So again, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, hit that like and subscribe button and I will talk to you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.